This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. My recent segment over Biddleby got me more interested in IRC, and I hope it did the same for you guys. Now, where did it start, and what other programs can I find out there to use it to its maximum potential? Right now, I'm just using it for Twiddle on Biddleby, and I'm using IRC for chat on the Hack5 channel, and that's about it. So today, I'm answering one of your viewer questions, and I'm also going to get into the history and theory behind IRC. So Internet Relay Chat, aka IRC, started in Finland at the University of, correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know any kind of Finnish, Ulu. It was created in 1988 by Jarko Wiz Okarinen. He basically wanted to implement real-time discussions BBS style. He created the chat part, which we all know and love and we're very familiar with, and then he started his own server. Eventually, Yarko and two of his friends asked the university if they could use the IRC code outside of Ulu. They then installed a new server to be the first IRC network that we all know and love. Now, new IRC servers started gaining momentum in several universities around the world, and its use grew and more servers were started to get installed in several different universities. Now, a server called eris.berkeley.edu Berkeley, go figure, was created in 1990, and this was completely open. There's no passwords, no limits. New servers were connecting, and everyone was getting NIC colliding, and that's basically a term used to describe when two users with the same NIC both end up being killed off because they're both using the same NIC, and it doesn't quite agree. And as soon as IRC finds out, it goes, no, you're out of there. Now, EFNet was then created to queue-line or quarantine the Iris machine from IRC, and both eventually died as the first major disagreement in the IRC world. And there's a lot of drama going on with that one. Now, several other forks off IRC were created in the early 1990s, including Tubnet and the Undernet. Undernet tried to make IRCD, the server software for IRC, less of a bandwidth hog and fix some of the issues EFNet fell, fell to. RFC, Request for Comments 1459 for IRC, was made public in 1993. And after this, Dalnet was formed. And this is another fork of an older server. Dalnet many, had many options that are still used to this day, such as longer nicknames, because originally they were only nine characters. And they could queue line nicks, so you couldn't use channel serve, you couldn't use Chan serve as a username, K lines, which is basically for banning, and all sorts of different things that we use to this day. Now, Oz.org was forked under Undernet 2, mainly for Australian use due to connection problems with the network link across the Trans Pacific, Australian, US line, and it was all sorts of crazies, so there was another thing. And then the great split happened in 1996, and I know a lot of you guys probably know of that name. It's after a big disagreement on how IRCD should evolve. When EFNet wanted to timestamp, IRCNet, the European servers, they wanted NIC and channel delays. There was all sorts of crazy stuff going on. And both services grew rapidly in the next two years with several thousand users. And at that time, in the early, or late 1990s, early 2000s, several thousand users was a hit. And then we hit the 2000s. Freenode is born out of the Open Projects net Network. Many other networks were created around this time, many of which exist today. Many standardization attempts have been made for all the networks to abide to, but none have worked. And since 2004 and 2005, IRC has seen a decline in most of its users, with QuakeNet being the most used network in, with over 100K in 2011. And even then, 100K is not that many IRC users. Now we have several programs to use IRC. We have you know, XChat and Mint IRC and all sorts of different ones. And many use hacks to make IRC more powerful, like Fiddleby. Now, I promised that I'd answer some feedback about IRC, so here it is. And right before we do get into that feedback question, I did want to mention, I found all of that history over at Daniel Stenberg's blog. He wrote out the entire thing, and it's really, really interesting. If you want to go over there and check it out, and check out all the other different stories about the IRC history, definitely you know, take a few hours and check it out, because it's very, very interesting. Now, Chad asks, rather than attaching each individual messenger account to Biddleby, is there a way to combine Biddleby and Pigeon so only one account, your Pigeon account, is connected to Biddleby? Be, or is it possible to use only Pigeon? Now, what I figured out is that you can convert Pigeon settings to Biddleby using a code called libpurple, and you can find all the information about that at the Pigeon website. What is libpurple? So it basically says this is intended to be the core of an IM program, which is why you need this file to use it with Biddleby. 
So they outline this entire thing on Pigeon's website. And then what you want to do is go over to Biddleby's blog. I also link this in here. Now, although this was written back in 2010, it is still useful to basically give you an overlay of what to do. Uh, what you should do is be able to find convert purple.py, a nice little file in one of your subdirectories. If you can't find this, what you'll do is click on here, and all this code right here is going to give you a nice little XML file that Beetlebee understands and uses to convert your Pigeon account. Once you have that done, you'll go back to their page, and it's going to give you this nice little layout that just copies and pastes the following commands into your Biddleby channel. Now, why that, while that isn't exactly converting your Pigeon account to Biddleby, it is pretty much the closest that I can find. Now, if you do have a different version of doing this, and maybe you users out there do, definitely let me know, and I'll be sure to you know, let everybody else out there know about the answer, too. Now, coming up soon, we'll have your Technolist photo and our favorite feedback. But first, a quick break. Hey Darren, where are you, BFE? Yeah, somewhere on there. Why? What's up? Well, my Linux machine quit working and I need to flash ducks. All right, hang on. I'm going to pull over and go to assist you. This is so typical. I've only been on the road for, what, six days now. And, I, and you know what? I knew that this was going to happen beforehand. And so I was smart and I actually set up all of my machines back home with uh, GoToAssist for their unattended support. I'm now connected to the hack shop computer that Sarah's using. This is really cool. For me, this saves my bacon. It allows me to run my business from anywhere, and I love it because they've got their service desk that allows you to track the incidents. They've got the awesome remote support, and it's not just you know Windows. It's like on Mac, it's on mobile devices now, which is fantastic. They've got their proactive support stuff. So if you're in IT, like I did 10 years as a systems administrator, and I wish I had this then, because they allow you to proactively monitor your whole network so you can just be the first one to find out when something's gonna go wrong, uh, which is really cool. And so I wanna thank GoToAssist for sponsoring Act 5 and actually helping me right now save the day because it turns out Ducky's weren't gonna get flashed either way. Um, and now we're up and running, so which is awesome. Um, and so yeah, here I am on the side of the road somewhere in America taking care of computers all the way in San Francisco. How about that? Uh, if you guys want to use this too, uh, it might be perfect for your business. Check it out at gotoassist.com. You can get a special 30-day free trial. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 and uh, and yeah, let them know, you know, tweet Citrix and let them know that uh, thanks for supporting Hack Across America. Wow, you're an IT hero, Darren. I'm dancing in my chair. I'm dancing in my chair too. to assist. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show, the Technolist photo of the week. Now this one is from HTTP Crash. He sends this wicked cool picture of a Wi-Fi pineapple on a Cisco phone. I, I want to know how you did that because that's pretty awesome. Now you can send your photos over to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line Technolist. <laughs> 